I wanted to take a second and answer a question I got uh, fairly recently on the Instagram, and it's another one of those comparison videos, and I know that um, a lot of people have been using my videos when deciding whether or not a Borzoi is uh, right for them, and I hope that it's helped. Any specific questions, as always, just throw it in the comments. I'm going to try to answer it, but some of these comparison videos, at least between sighthounds, seem to be helping people as they're deciding what breed um, is right for them. I did one specifically about borzois and uh, deer hounds and greyhounds. Uh, this is going to be about borzois, silken wind hounds, and Italian greyhounds. So, as I've done these videos before, and hopefully if you've seen my videos, you kind of know <laughs> the basics about what it's like to own a borzoi. That is uh, what these two little muppets here are. Uh, larger um, sight hounds, and, and what we're going to do is compare kind of generally to them. So just basic stuff. Borzois are, uh, you know, large. They can be from 55 to 105 pounds. Um, they are described as a large, fuzzy greyhound. They have a really mellow temperament, kind of regal, kind of elegant, very aloof. Uh, like a lot of sight hounds are kind of hard to train. They do have, you know, a lot of exercise requirements. They need to be off. They cannot be off leash without a collar. Um, this is all stuff I go in in depth on previous videos. So I want to use these though as the sounding board as we talk about these other breeds. Um, the first of the two is the silken wind hounds. You know, um, silken wind hounds are smaller and going to be uh, from about 20 to 55 pounds. Interestingly enough, it is a very new breed. The first silken wind hounds will bred in 1985. Somebody who had borzois and lurchers took kind of these prized lines and made them into a specific breed. They really do look like a small borzoi. They're like a combination of a borzoi and a whippet. You get some of the same temperaments. They're very affectionate. Um, they are, you know, they are sight hounds. They're very aloof. They're very independent. I have noticed, at least these silken wound hounds that I have met, they have a lot more zoomy energy. So they're a little bit more high strung. They're, uh, they like to go crazy. They got that whippet side of things, it seems. Um, but, you know, they are a good idea for somebody who doesn't want to deal with a dog that is as large as a borzoi. And I could see somebody who was worried about walking a large male borzoi. And, you know, if you're on a leash and something and they they have that prey drive, if they go, they might take you with you. So I could see that being a definite benefit. Uh, but you're going to get the same similarities, especially with the coat. They have that kind of luxurious coat, almost like a self, um, you know, self, uh, self cleaning. They got that magical fur that just kind of takes care of itself. So there are some benefits to that, the smaller, uh, a smaller compact size. Going further down that compact size, we have the Italian Greyhound. Um, interesting enough, this is an ancient breed, you know, about 2000 years ago that they have unearthed, um, Italian Greyhounds and they have almost always been predominantly with the nobility. They were bred as companion dogs. Um, and, you know, they're small. This is 8 to 11 pounds. It's like a, you took a Borzoi and shot it with a shrink ray, be, it'd be an Italian Greyhound. I've noticed in the Italian Greyhounds I've met, they can be um, very high strung. You can get Italian Greyhounds that are skittish. You can get Italian Greyhounds that, um, uh, that, that, that need their companionship all the time. They can be very needy. Uh, but I've seen them at the exact opposite where they are. Again, they kind of have that sighthound aloofness and they want to just go off and sleep. They are generally a pretty healthy breed. They, they live a long life, up to 15 years. Um, but I think that considerations for them, if you're looking at a sight hound and you're looking for something that does not need the same level of space or exercise, the Italian Greyhound is a pretty good, uh, is a pretty good option. They are going to need some exercise, but you know, being by nature so little, just a regular walk is actually getting them a lot of exercise. Um, so compared to the Borzoi, I would say the, the Silkens are a little bit more um, active, um, a little less of the elegant sort of furniture that, that they become, that Borzois become later in life. They are a new breed, um, but they are really fun. They are a really fun dog. They come in all the same sort of party colors that Borzois do, and there are a lot of very reputable breeders. You know, uh, Silken Windhounds have been recognized by the uh, United Kennel Club as a breed. They have not been recognized yet, uh, by the AKC, but I'm sure that will be something that is going to happen in the near future. And yeah, your Italian Greyhounds, I I do love them. Um, I've met a, some that just have incredible personalities. They're, they are 
charming and the center of intention, attention, and they love to be dressed up and loved and snuggled and carried around places. So if you're looking for a dog that, you know, is going to ride in your purse or going to be with you all the time, it might be a great option for you. Um, and, you know, I... I hope that these sort of things that these sort of things help you. Uh, this is all again all my own personal experience with specific dogs. So some people, will, as always in the comments, will jump in and kind of give us their their thoughts. If you have a silken wind down, if you have an Italian greyhound, I'd love to see you guys hop in the comments and and um, you know sort of talk about this, what their experiences are. Also, you know, I want to apologize, guys. I haven't been doing a lot of YouTube videos. It's just been crazy with um, COVID. I'm actually in Arizona right now as opposed to Los Angeles. It's just been, um, just been kind of a really nuts last few months. But I'm going to start getting back into it. So anything you guys want to see on this channel. Um, it's really funny. I always thought, I thought that I was going to be like, oh, cool. I did all the Borzo videos I had to do. Um, and now I'm rethinking what I want to be doing with um, YouTube as a venue. You know, I do so many videos on TikTok and Instagram daily. And those are more irreverent, sort of comedy-based. I want to stick to the... Um, you know, more serious, more educational side of things here. So I really appreciate you guys sticking with me, um, especially through this lull. And uh, we'll be seeing more of each other. And anything you want to know, please let me know.